So, you decided to play Kingdom Hearts. But you don't know what order to play it in. However, that's why I'm going to tell you which order you should play these games in to catch yourself up on the story. Now, I am going to start this off with saying that this is not a story recap video. But if you do want me to make one, make sure you subscribe to the channel, support your boy, and stay tuned because that will be coming relatively soon after this video drops. And if you want more updates on when things are happening, like when videos are coming out, make sure you join the Discord. Link will be down below in the description. Now this video is going to include and cover every game from Kingdom Hearts 1 to Kingdom Hearts Dark Road. And I'll briefly go over little things on why this is likely the best way to experience the story while keeping it as spoiler free as possible. So, any case, let's get it started. So, before you play the games, you gotta get the games. It's, it's pretty standard. However, things are different for different systems, so I'll give you the ideal way to get all the games for each system. So, this is for my PS4 players out there. You'll likely want to buy the Kingdom Hearts all-in-one package on the PlayStation Store, or if you can find a physical copy, that's fine too. The package includes Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories, the 358 Over 2 Days cutscene movie, and yes, you'll, you'll get used to the titles, it's fine. The Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix, the Kingdom Hearts Recoded Cutscene Movie, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance HD, Kingdom Hearts 0.28 Fragmentary Passage, again, titles, I get it, it's okay, the Kingdom Hearts Key Back Cover Movie, and finally, Kingdom Hearts 3. You get all of that in, in, as it says, in the all-in-one package, so yeah, that's, that's a pretty good deal. And then after that, you're also going to want to get the Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC as well. However, that is sold separately from the all-in-one package. So that's a whole thing you're going to have to buy. Now, for my Xbox users out there, it's a little more complicated than for PS4. So first, you're going to want to get the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 Remix Bundle, which includes every game from Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix to the Kingdom Hearts Recoded Cutscene move. Then, you're gonna wanna get the Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue Bundle, which includes Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance, 0.2 A Fragmentary Passage, and Kingdom Hearts Key Back Cover. And then finally, you're gonna wanna get Kingdom Hearts 3 with the Remind DLC sold separately. And for both parties, if you want, you can download the Kingdom Hearts Union Cross mobile app, which includes the Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and Kingdom Hearts Dark Road games. But in my opinion, you're probably just better off watching some of the cutscenes online, and I'll explain why in a bit. However, if you have a 3DS, and if you can find a copy, you can also play 358 over 2 days and Recoded since they were originally for the Nintendo DS and Dream Drop Distance since it was originally for the 3DS. But for 358 over 2 days and Recoded, I'd probably just watch the cutscene movies if I were you if it's your first time, or at least wait until you've watched the movies to go back and play the games. Because I'd hate for a lackluster gameplay to take you out of an immersive story. And I mostly say that for Days and Union Cross because the stories in them are really good. Honestly, they're some of my favorites. But I really just can't get into the gameplay for some reason. It takes me out of it. But that's why I also recommend watching the cutscenes online for Union Cross and Dark Road as well. And for Dream Drop Distance on the 3DS, it's fine if you want to go back and play it. But the HD version in the collection is the definitive experience, so you're probably better off just sticking with that. And as it goes for the cutscene movies, there are a bunch of extra cutscenes in the cutscene movies that were not in the original games. So you're likely just better off watching those. And finally, for my Switch users out there... Sorry. Alright, so now you have every Kingdom Hearts game. But, you're left with the dilemma of which order do I play them in? Well... Let's get into it. First, you're gonna want to start with Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix. It follows a boy named Sora who goes on a journey to find his friends alongside Donald and Goofy. This game is an action RPG with real-time combat and it's where the series initially began, so pretty straightforward, best place to start something is probably at the beginning. The game itself will probably take you anywhere from 20 to 30 hours to finish and it goes by fast and it gets you pretty sort of wrapped up in the combat and the journey, so frankly I think it's a good start, pretty strong start to the franchise. And when you finish that, you're going to want to go on to Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories. This game again follows Sora, Donald, and Goofy and takes place directly after the end of Kingdom Hearts 1, and you're introduced to the main antagonistic force for the series. It's an action RPG, but this time your actions are related to cards in this game. And the game will tell you more, but this game is different in the sense that it requires a little more strategy than Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix did. And this game also has two separate storylines. A normal playthrough where you play as Sora that takes about maybe 10 to 15 hours, and another mode where you play as another character. 
That story takes place around the same time as Sora's, but this time you get to see sort of the other side of that story, so make sure you complete this before moving on to the next game. And don't worry, this mode is shorter than Sora's side of the story, it takes maybe about 4-6 to six hours to complete as well. Next up is Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. This takes place about a year after the events of Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. It follows the story of a mysterious boy named Roxas who seems to have some sort of connection to Sora, but that's all I'm going to say about that, I'm trying to keep it as spoiler free as possible. This game is widely regarded as the best in the series and goes back to the normal style of combat from Kingdom Hearts 1, but introduces some new mechanics and just has an overall faster, more snappy combat style. This game is different from Reach and of Memories in the sense that there aren't any other modes, just a one and done story. And after the game, you'll find some super bosses called the Data Organization and Lingering Will, and you can fight them if you want, but they are incredibly hard and they are optional, so do with that information what you will. This game takes about the same time as Kingdom Hearts 1, taking about 20 to 30 hours to complete. And now it's time to go to the first of the cutscene movies. Next, you're gonna wanna watch the 358 over 2 days cutscene movie. Personally, this is my favorite story of the series, but not my favorite game. The gameplay from 358 over 2 days is just very repetitive. Now, like I said before, if you have a DS or a 3DS and you can find a copy of this game, you can go ahead and play it. Personally, I think it's just better to watch the movie because the game can get pretty lackluster. And like I said, nothing against the game. If you have a DS or a 3DS and you can find a copy of this game, then go ahead and play it. But I would recommend you watch the cutscene movie first. In any case, this movie follows the story of Roxas and his time in the organization and shows you everything that leads up to the Kingdom Hearts 2 prologue. And it also gives you some more context on what happens in Chain of Memories, so this is more of a prequel game. But it's about 3 hours long, so get some popcorn, get comfy, and enjoy the film. Next up is Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix. This game is another prequel game and takes place about 10 years before the events of Kingdom Hearts 1. And this one is a little weird because there are actually 3 separate stories. But fear not, they are all relatively short and add up to about the length of Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, clocking in in about 20 to 30 hours. This game follows the story of three friends named Aqua, Terra, and Ventus. And throughout the story, you visit the same world as all three of them, but kind of like in Chain of Memories, you get every character's side of the story and get access to different areas and different stories until they all line up. And speaking of which, there is actually a correct order to play through these stories as well. First, you're going to want to play through Terra's story, then Ventus's, and then Aqua's. And for Aqua's story, you're going to want to unlock the last episode and the secret episode to get the full context of this game. And those are two different things and they're both very important to the story. So to unlock the final episode and fight the game's sort of true final boss, you'll need to collect all the secret reports across the three character stories. Once you do that, you should get a prompt that says you unlock the final episode and then go to Radiant Garden to face the true final boss. The secret episode is a little harder to unlock because it depends on what difficulty you play on. For example, you can unlock the secret episode in beginner mode, so make sure you're playing on at least standard mode. To unlock it on standard, the player must complete the sticker album and defeat 9999 unverse to obtain the Keyslinger trophy. If you're playing on proud, you only need to complete the sticker album, and if you're playing on critical mode, first of all, congrats to you for playing critical mode on your first playthrough, you only need to clear the final episode to unlock the secret episode, fight the secret episode boss, and watch the final cutscene. However, if you don't feel like doing that again, you can also just watch the cutscenes on YouTube. Next up after that is another cutscene movie. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the Kingdom Hearts Recoded cutscene movie. And again, this is one of the games you can play if you have it on a DS, but personally, just watch the movie. It's better anyway. This game takes place directly after the events of Kingdom Hearts 2. You follow the events of Mickey, Donald, and Goofy as they try to decipher a mysterious message that's in Jiminy's journal. And to do that, they recruit the help of Datasaur to help go through and figure out who wrote the message and why. However, if you want to skip through it and just go straight to the end and watch the last couple of cutscenes, that's fine because those are definitely the most important of the story and you'll need to at least watch those. Honestly, the story in this game is probably the weakest and I'm sure a lot of people will agree with that. So if you want to skip and go to the end and watch the last couple of cutscenes, look, I won't tell if you won't. But make sure you at least watch the last couple of cutscenes because those are definitely the most important of the story. This movie is about the same length as 358 over 2 days, clocking in about 3 hours. And then after that, you are officially done with the 1.5 and 2.5 collection. Now it's time to move on to the 2.8 collection which is significantly shorter. After the recoded movie, you're going to want to go to Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance HD. This movie takes place directly after recoded. And this game is likely one of the most important games in the series because it contains the most amount of lore throughout the series and is a huge lead into Kingdom Hearts 3. 
This game requires you to complete two stories throughout the game and you'll play them side by side going from one to the other throughout the course of the game, so don't worry about starting and finishing a story and then going back and playing another. Similar to Birth by Sleep, you'll visit these same worlds but go through different areas to get the full picture. Also, make sure you unlock the secret ending for this game because that gives you a little more context for the future of the series as well, going into Kingdom Hearts 3. This game should take you maybe 20 to 25 hours. Next up is the mobile game Kingdom Hearts Key. Now this game was a little weird because this game actually never released in the US, but thanks to the amazing translators in the community there are plenty of translations to watch on YouTube, I'll link some down below. The story takes place hundreds of years before the story of Kingdom Hearts 1 and gives some context of the lore of the series that leads up into the future of the franchise. And on that same beat, make sure you watch the Kingdom Hearts back cover movie that is in the 2.8 collection. This is the same story as Kingdom Hearts Key, but it follows the story and the viewpoints of the foretellers and their role in that story as well. After you're done with that, you're going to want to play 0.2 Birth by Sleep, A Fragmentary Passage. You get used to the titles, it's okay. This is by far the shortest playable game as it was basically a tech demo for Kingdom Hearts 3 where you play as Aqua. This game is a direct lead into Kingdom Hearts 3 because it ends where Kingdom Hearts 3 begins. The game itself lasts about 4 hours and it's a pretty short playthrough. And finally, the most recent full game in the franchise you'll want to play is Kingdom Hearts 3. This game is the final story in the saga and my personal favorite. It wraps up a lot of storylines while expanding and teasing on others for the future of the franchise. The base game takes about the same time as Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, clocking in at about 30 hours. Then you're going to want to play the Remind DLC which has three phases. The Remind episode, the Limit Cut episode, and the Secret episode. The Remind portion which is most of the story content takes about 4-5 to five hours to complete. The Limit Cut episode is similar to the data organization from Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, except this is not optional if you want all the story and you're gonna want to beat them to complete it. I do recommend being level 99 and having the ultimate weapon for these fights because these fights are extremely hard, even on standard. However, don't worry if you can't clear them or if you just don't want to do all that. You can also find the cutscenes on YouTube, but personally, I think the fights are fun, so I would at least give them a try. Then the secret episode contains a couple of cutscenes and then a boss fight, which in my opinion is the hardest in the series. It's sort of the same deal for the Limit Cut episode, if you want to, you can go through the fight, but if not, you should definitely watch the cutscenes on YouTube because those lead directly into the future of the Kingdom Hearts franchise, and they are extremely important. Alright, now you've played through the entire series. Congrats! Now, remember when I said to download Union Cross on your phone? So, while you're waiting for Melody of Memory to release this November, I recommend you watch the Union Cross and Dark Road cutscenes in between. Union Cross is a direct continuation of Kingdom Hearts Key and Dark Road is a prequel game that gives more context on the game's main antagonist. The reason I put this at the end is because these games are still receiving story updates and aren't finished yet, so you're probably better off just playing through the main games first and letting it build up. And that's it, you've officially played through the Kingdom Hearts series. Congratulations, you are now on the Nomura Pain Strain headed straight toward confusion and more questions. If this video helped you, make sure you leave a like, and if you play through the series a different way, let me know down below in the comments. Also, and if you want to see more videos like this, more quality Kingdom Hearts content, and if you want to see the recap story video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, support your boy, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. My name is Moose Wayne one and remember, stay strong, remain humble, and keep moving forward.